that's ticked. Okay, you okay? Yeah, so do you want to just let that run for a second? Yeah, I'll let it run. No, let it run for a bit. Yeah. So these are pictures from the yes. All right. Well, I'll, I'll get start slowly because I can see some people leaving for a little break. Uh, what, we, what you see up here are f uh, photographs from our uh, caravan project, which you'll learn more about, which takes us up into the Laurentian region with our uh, social services and health programs. And at the bottom, you see the names of some of the communities from which our students come. So. Uh, you, this is a presentation that's going to be done by the three of us. Uh, a, it might look like I'm the uh, lead singer and I have background singers, but in fact, I'm much more the background singer. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'd like to welcome all of you, especially those of you who've come from far away. Uh, I'm going to uh, just give you a few basic facts about the campus, uh, may, or about the college, so maybe we'll switch to the PowerPoint. Is that, okay, so, uh, so there you see uh, the main building of our college. It's the Hertzberg building. Uh, by the way, Hertzberg, if you ever want to read about an interesting individual, he is one. Uh, this, use, this campus opened in 1907, by the way, as part of McGill. Uh, it was once referred to as McDonald College. Now we share the campus with uh, what is referred to as the McDonald campus of McGill. So uh, that's uh, led to various uh, collaborations between McGill and uh, at, well, the McDonald part of McGill and us over the years. If you don't know where we are, we're situated on the far extreme western tip of Montreal Island. Uh, generally, um, we have a fairly uh, long history of connections to the regions, partly because the campus and the college, are the knowledge of them are rooted out there in the regions through the uh, McGill's history with the regions because it was once both the education faculty and the an agricultural school, which it still is. So lots of people out there in rural Quebec know about this campus, even if they are uh, um, uh, have not gone to John Abbott. Uh, anyway, we have on campus a residence with 195 places, 90% of which are reserved for students from Quebec, and we, the admission is. Uh, criteria, one of the crucial ones is distance. So the further away a student is, the higher priority they have. The reason we reserve 90% of the uh, places for Quebec students is the Quebec government helped us renovate the residence at one time and one of the conditions was that we it be principally a residence for Quebec uh, students. A couple of other things about the college that are relevant uh, to what we're doing here is that we have a, an indigenous uh, student resource center uh, that's a very important uh, dimension of what we're doing, and as institutions in the country work through the truth and reconciliation process, we are putting a lot of emphasis on that, and it is part of our regional outreach as well. We have lots of students from uh, up north and uh, from various uh, indigenous communities around the province. We also have an international projects office, which again is relevant sort of indirectly to this because we are used to dealing with uh, students from far away, including across this huge province, as uh, Daniel noted. Uh, in total, we have 6,600 uh, day students. And uh, according to SRAM data, which is the admissions uh, um, uh, 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 program that we use, uh, in fall 2017, we had uh, 2,376 students from off uh, island. Uh, that's 36.1% of our day students. So 36% of our students are from somewhere other than the island of Montreal. Um, of our 6,600 daytime students, two-thirds of them are in pre-university programs, the two-year programs which uh, students typically take when they're thinking of going to university, and about a third of them are, are in our technology or professional programs or career programs as we variously refer to them. So that's uh, about uh, 2,200 students uh, in our programs. Um, we have 12 of these technology or professional programs. I'm responsible for 11 of them. And uh, the McGill Dialogue Project is relevant to five of our programs. And those programs are the Police Technology Program, the Youth and Adult Correctional Intervention Program, our Nursing Program, our Dental Hygiene Program, and our pre-hospital emergency care program. Uh, 
Francine Trudeau from our dental hygiene program is here today, and Maria Lewis from the nursing program. Uh, so they have been involved in the uh, retention project, the uh, caravan. Now, of, in our student body, the dialogue programs, those five dialogue programs represent 11.6% uh, of the student, bodies, uh, student body, which is 765 students. So 765 students, those are the students who are involved in programs relevant to the, what we're doing here today. Now, among those programs, I think I've lost my, whoops, is that okay? Uh, uh, among those programs, uh, only nursing, uh, it, well, let me put it, the, the four programs, youth and adult, police tech, uh, dental hygiene, and, and pre-hospital, we are the only English SAGEP that offer those programs, whereas nursing, there are, it's offered at several English-speaking SAGEPs and at many French-speaking SAGEPs. That's relevant, you'll see when we see the data from the, uh, from the surveys. So I think, Jean, you wanted to get up and talk about the history of our involvement with the Dialogue Project. Thank you. I think um, Kimberly uh, earlier said um, education is the key. So certainly when I came on board, the team at uh, Dialogue, my background is I was director of a, a SAGEP in Quebec, and I was at that stage for 35 years, and then they said, uh, enough's enough, you can go on, go, go to McGill. So uh, I was, I've been involved in, in the SAGEP system, and it just made so much sense to me to get SAGEPs involved in dialogue. We, we were working with uh, SAGEP Champlain, St. Lambert, we we're dealing with, uh, with Heritage, with Dawson, John Abbott, uh, we're dealing with uh, SAGEP à distance, so we're dealing with a number of SAGEPs that are, are really involved with our programs. We're also uh, working with programs in, at the professional level in the high schools, in the, in the school boards. We have a, an agreement with uh, Eastern Quebec Learning Centre with their assistant pharmacy program. So as we looked at the, the, the programs and the SAGEPs, it only seemed natural that we get involved a lot more with, with these programs. Because in many areas, they are hiring the technologists. They are, in many areas, they are the people that are dealing with our population, our graduates. So it, it seemed natural as I looked at all the SAGEPs to work with a SAGEP, and I looked, uh, certainly as I've mentioned, a few SAGEPs, but when I looked at John Abbott, and when I met the people at John Abbott, it was like I felt it right away that they were so enthusiastic about the potential to better serve the English population in Quebec. And it was, it was a natural. It just worked right from the minute I arrived. And of course, I, I, you know, I have helpers, uh, Doug and Joanne, but as any, any of you have worked in the SAGEPs or in the universities, when you also have the faculty behind you, and, and I have Francine and Maria, uh, that goes a long way. So we, we started working on projects, and we basically had three projects at John Abbott. We had the caravan, you see our, our little flag there, uh, and, and um, uh, Joanne will talk about uh, the, the program. We also uh, looked at internships. Uh, we have a few students, or a couple students are going up to Mistassini, dental hygiene, and anyone that lives in, in northern part of the, uh, Quebec will see the unbelievable necessity and unbelievable um, uh, importance of, of dental hygiene in some of the areas of Quebec. And then our last one was survey, and that we'll get into uh, later on. You know, when we send, and I'm just for a second look at the internship, when we send students on an internship program, they get to talk to other students about their profession. And if I pinpoint dental hygiene. Some of the students in Mistassini probably have never seen a dental hygienist. And then they talk to the student. They realize that maybe that's a profession they'd like. And maybe they will come to John Abbott, study, and then go back to their community. So it's, it, the internships are, are, are extremely important. The caravan, as Joanne will talk to you about, also did in many ways the same thing. So the, the uh, project with John Abbott, it's a beginning. The, when we have support from that project, from the director general to the, the deans to so well, the staff and teachers. So it, it's what we need, it's, and we hope and I think Mireille has mentioned this, that John Abbott is, in a sense, a, a model for us to use with other SAGEPs, with other regions, and hopefully we'll be able to do some of the things we're doing at John Abbott in other uh, parts of Quebec. So I'd ask uh, Joanne to maybe uh, go through it. 
You, oh, Doug, sorry, Doug, you, thank you. So this is our regional conversations wheel. We uh, took uh, the MIGL dialogue uh, uh, title and, and came up with regional conversation, John Abbott, regional conversations. It's sort of interesting, see, we put, uh, insofar as we're talking about English speaking Quebecers, we see this, uh, you know, loop between the students, the educational institutions, the community groups and networks, and then off around us are other stakeholders uh, with whom we interact. So uh, this, the, we got, just in, we interact with all sorts of people around the province, uh, just for the people who know her, uh, Lorraine O'Donnell of Quest Grand gave us advice on what to put up on here, and I'm going to mention some of the things that we do. Uh, some of the other stakeholders we've uh, worked with, we've worked for about 45 or 46 years with uh, Veterans Affairs uh, at the Veterans Hospital in St. Anne de Bellevue, which is now, of course, a provincial institution at CIUS, but we still have this ongoing uh, interaction with both the CIUS de l'Ouest de Lille and uh, Veterans Affairs. We have regional contacts with um, CEGEP uh, de la Gaspésie, where we have an exchange program. We're often looking for exchange programs with uh, Francophone CEGEP, so students can come uh, go back and forth between French and English speaking CEGEPs and do a semester in the, the other language. Um, we are working uh, closely with people from StatCan, uh, using resources from, for, from there with, uh, for research that certain people are doing. Um, uh, I, another stakeholder that we've uh, dealt with recently is uh, QCGN. In fact, Stephen Thompson, I'm sure some of you know him, came and did a presentation, which I'll mention uh, um, later. So we, uh, we look very much for these dynamic uh, interactions with uh, communities and groups around the province. So, um, as I uh, noted, we have, a, or as Jean noted, we have a, a really strong faculty buy-in from the five dialogue programs, and uh, they're helping us. Uh, in the, the five dialogue programs, there is a lot of experience and expertise dealing with um, uh, minority communities of all kinds. Um, so they're a very, very a great source of strength for us as we uh, um, develop these conversations. Um, another thing I should mention is that just by accident, it turns out that the senior management at John, Ab John Abbott right now have many uh, personal and uh, family links to different regions, including Thetford Mines, Manawaki, you know, I could use the terms Estrie and uh, Utoué, uh, the Monterégie, the Eastern Townships. So it, th this is a kind of accidental, uh, uh, and, and Quebec City. So at the senior level, we, uh, everybody sort of understands intuitively uh, how, how important connections to the, uh, the regions are and what uh, the, the regions actually are, are like. Um, is there something else I should mention among those things? I think I've, uh, so as Jean has mentioned, we have had three dialogue initiatives. Uh, for, with, benefits, with benefits for the English speaking community and the student and educational institutions. And I think I'll let Joanne get into the details of what our, our principal activity has been. So John Abbott's first initiative with the dialogue program was a health, justice, and social service caravan. So this photo was taken at Dumontang High School last year. So for the past two years, and again this year, on four Wednesdays in February and March, a total of 20 students, five faculty members, and one project manager will pile into the big blue John Abbott school bus with all their supplies and be driven to one or two pre-selected locations in the Laurentians to set up and man kiosks in a local church or regional high school for the day. This year, Dumontang, Le Chute, St. Agathe, Morin Heights, and Gore are the towns we will be visiting. As part of the project, we also introduce our students to life in the regions by taking them on little side trips. Last year, we went up the gondola at uh, Trambla, and that was a really big highlight. A lot of them had never been up there before. So the arrangements for these locations are made by Four Corners, our community partner in the Laurentians, and their executive director, Stephanie Helmer, is here today, along with her colleague from St. Agathe, Jill Grumbach. So we thank them. One of the goals of the caravan is to engage with attendees and share information via interactive exhibits. Last year, the police students brought drunk driving goggles, the pre-hospital emergency care students brought CPR mannequins, and the dental hygiene students showed the effects of high sugar drinks and poor brushing technique after eating an Oreo cookie. 
nursing students created a go fish game to induce stress and used the opportunity to, to initiate a conversation with students about anxiety, coping mechanisms, and social media strategies. Finally, the youth and adult correctional students address senior fraud, sexting, and bullying. On more than one occasion, high school students shared confidences with Jack's dialogue students and were subsequently referred to their school guidance counselors for further assistance. Screening health tests for diabetes, cholesterol, blood pressure, oxygen level, and ECGs were available to community members free of charge. All were carried out in a relaxed environment with detailed explanation by the John Abbott students and their professors. If an anomaly was discovered, they were referred to their uh, teacher and then to the medical doctor, a medical doctor. Last year, the cli caravan clientele was over 550 high school students, 30 school educators, and 60 community members, mainly seniors. And advertising was done via social media, coverage in the Montreal Gazette, local newspapers, and the executive director of Four Corners and a John Abbott nursing student were interviewed on CBC's Breakaway radio show. So our second initiative is brand new and is related to internships. Thanks to a special project grant from Dialogue McGill and through contacts from Francine Trudeau, the chair of dental hygiene, two graduating dental hygiene students who are interested in working in the regions will be spending their five-day community health internship in Mistissini, Quebec during the March break that's coming up soon. Mistissini is the largest Cree community in Quebec and is located an hour north of Shibugamu at the south end of Lake Mistassini. The two interns will be visiting local schools and community groups with two hygienists who are employed by the Conseil Cree de la Santé et des Services Sociaux de la Baie James. Before they leave on this exciting trip, they will be meeting with the coordinator of the John Abbott Indigenous Resource Centre, and the plan is for them to also connect with some of the college's students from the region. John Abbott is open to opportunities with English-speaking Indigenous communities, and internships in all regions is something we would like to expand in the future. Jean. I would I would add I, I had the opportunity to uh, to go on the caravan and and one of the areas of Quebec and I think if there's anything that's th there can't be anything more motivating than seeing these young students and around in a gym uh, talking to other students and then going to a church basement talking to seniors it it. I think that's why we're in education. Many of us that are in education. It's just remarkable. And the thought, and, and I always had discussions as uh, between brushing my teeth and getting my blood pressure taken, I'd have discussions with the students about, you know, would you want to serve in this community? Would you want to come back in this community? And it's always really, really interesting to get their, their response. And, and in, in many ways, it's, um, it's very, um, it, it gives us hope that, uh, that our, uh, the future is great when we have some of these uh, young students. One of, the, um, one of the things that came up at, at, uh, around the table at uh, Dialogue, uh, we started asking ourselves a question, and many people from the regions will say, well, we know that students from the regions want to come back, and probably, but we're not sure. And one of my colleagues, um, uh, Carolyn Storr, who's at the, uh, in occupational health, a professor at McGill, uh, one day we were just sitting in our offices and, and uh, there's Carolyn right there. Hi, Carolyn. And, and uh, Carolyn had mentioned that she had uh, set up an internship for a student uh, from the regions. And when the student, when she had it all set up, the student said, well, I, I don't want to go back to the region. I want to stay here. And that's when we started saying, well, are we just assuming that everybody wants to go back home? And that was the, the questioning that we had. And that's when I sat down with uh, the people at John Abbott, again, because they have a residence, because I knew they had students from the regions uh, studying at John Abbott. I asked them, I said, let's, let's just get a few simple questions that we can ask your students about uh, whether they want to return to their region or not. And I said simple because I know we had to go through the, the ethics uh, uh, committees uh, at the SAGEP, so I didn't want it to be too complicated. So we had very simple questions that we hope will guide us as we look towards the next uh, phase of the project. So again, uh, these are a group of students at the SAGEP at John Abbott, and I'll get uh, Joanne to comment. So after obtaining the approval of the John Abbott Research Ethics Board, 
An optional eight question long survey was made available on Omnivox to all day students for two weeks at the end of October 2017. The response rate college wide was 53%. We had 3,495 responses out of 6,600 day students. They answered questions about where they plan to live and work upon the completion of their studies. The average response rate was even higher for the dialogue programs, 60.5%. In real numbers, this means 600, four, sorry, 463 students answered out of a potential of 765 dialogue students. So the first slide shows the information collected in response to the question, what region of Quebec did you live in when you applied to John Abbott College, i.e., where is home? By filtering the responses, we extracted the five programs that are eligible for the Dialogue McGill project and can see that there are some statistically significant differences between these five programs, as well as between their overall average and that of the college. So the first five blue graphs, everyone can see it's over here as well, are the five programs. The gray one is the average of the dialogue programs. And the last one is the John Abbott community excluding the dialogue programs. So it's a it's at 32%. It's a bit hard to read, but the height of the graph gives you an idea. Doug, do you want to talk? Doug's going to talk a bit about the rationale for this. Well, these are just a few com a brief comments. Uh, you might be interested in the relative size of the programs. So I will tell you there are 97 students in dental hygiene. Uh, in nursing, there are 238 students, so it's considerably larger. Police technology, also a large program, has 211 students. And pre-hospital, we, we have 100 students in pre-hospital. And finally, in youth and adult correctional intervention, there are 119 students. So the programs are significantly different in terms of the numbers of students. Now, if you want to know why these uh, ratios of students uh, living off island are different for programs. One thing you should note is this is the first time we've done this. We might get a different ratio next year if we do this again or if we plot this over several years. Um, now, uh, police technology is, we have the only English speaking police tech program. A lot of Francophone students are interested in doing it in English because it increases their employment opportunities later, which explains one reason, that's one reason why, or two reasons why we have so, uh, such a higher ratio of students from off island in police tech. In the same way, nursing, since there are so many nursing programs in the, program, in the province, both in English and French, they tend to attract more local students. Uh, beyond that, there isn't much to say uh, that it can be conclusive in terms of measuring the numbers of students off island, who are from off island and on island. But it is significant that such a, a much higher number of students are in the, pro, in the dialogue programs are from off island than in our general student body where, as Joanne noted, it's 32% as opposed to 47% uh, in the dialogue programs. Another question, is this mic, do I just drop it? Okay. Another question that demonstrates an interesting result is, upon the completion of your studies, CGEP and or university, would you be interested in living and or working in a region of Quebec that is not on the island of Montreal? So we can see that within each of the five dialogue programs, the interest is higher for the students who have their home off the island. These are the blue students. A high percentage of these students are interested in living and working in their home communities after the completion of their studies. This next slide shows that on average, even the dialogue students who have Montreal as their home, the orange group, are more interested in moving to the regions than the average non-dialogue John Abbott student, the yellow group. So again, in blue is the off-island dialogue student, orange is the on-dialogue student, and yellow is John Abbott, everybody except the dialogue programs. We realize that we can't accurately measure plans, but ask the following question anyways. Are you planning to live or work in your home region upon the completion of your studies, again, CGEP and or university, 
and the three choices offered to respondents were yes, no, and not sure. On the right of the first grouping, so the tall 46.5%, we can see that there is a high rate of uncertainty for the dialogue students who have their home off the island of Montreal versus those who live on island. They are not in the planning phase yet, and they don't know what their future plans are. Students were also asked what would motivate them to plan to live or work in their home region. And by far the greatest factor was family and friends. This was also true for all students in the college. Doug's going to talk a bit. Well, first of all, you'll note that, uh, well, as Joanne said, the family and friends is very high and community is relatively low. If I were somebody in the regions trying to recruit people into the regions, I would note that lifestyle and possibly of employment are relatively high. So one thing you can do, of course, is promote the uh, lifestyle advantages of living in various regions. And of course, the more employment there is in the regions for our graduates, the more of them will be uh, happy to go there. Um, um, on the issue of community being so low, I would suggest that that is some place where we can actually work and, uh, if, and sort of bolstering the strength of community groups of various kinds in the regions and, and trying to uh, uh, enhance the interest students might have of becoming parts of those communities. Uh, one thing that might be done that is sometimes done uh, when recruiters uh, come to our nursing program to recruit into the states is they try to hire uh, more than one person at once so that when somebody goes down to Maryland or so on, they're going with a friend. That is, of course, a very complicated and maybe difficult thing to achieve, but it would increase uh, the sense of uh, having of belonging to a region if you had friends who were going with you. So that's uh, about all that I would venture to say about those uh, results. So we also thought that French would be an interesting point. So we asked the students' opinion on whether they felt that their current level of spoken or written French would be an obstacle for them in terms of living or working off the island of Montreal. 38.5% of the dental hygiene students and 31.6% of the youth and adult correctional students stated that their current level of spoken French, the green graph, would be an obstacle and the percentages were even higher for their written French, the columns in blue. As you can see, written French is something that a significant proportion of students in all the dialogue programs, except police technology, identify as an obstacle. If we remove the police tech students from the calculations, the second chart, we can see that the dialogue students average shifts to 28.7% identifying spoken French as an obstacle and 38.2% identifying written French as an obstacle. Both percentages are well above the college average of 20.7% spoken and 22.1% written. In conclusion, if we exclude the police tech students, French is perceived as an obstacle to live or work off the island of Montreal by students in the dialogue programs. So I'm just going to make some remarks about how we might, uh, yes, five minutes, yes, just on how, about how we might work with these results uh, going forward. Uh, clearly, one thing we need to do is to explore uh, ways that we can uh, improve the, or the teaching of French to some of the students in dialogue programs. We could develop complementary courses in French. I won't get uh, into the details of that administratively, of what we do with complementary courses, and uh, also develop and enhance the teaching of French for specifically for students in dialogue programs. Um, uh, one thing, another thing we probably need to do, uh, since uh, one of, we try to support our student body in its diversity, diversity can be defined in many ways, and one way that we could break it down and define it is through uh, regional uh, origin, because, because of course a student coming to us from Gas Bay or f the far north experiences things that uh, students who are from the Montreal area don't experience, chiefly because they're not necessarily urbanized to the same degree. Um, we would like to explore and develop internship opportunities for dialogue students uh, to go to the regions or to return to the regions. 
We'd like to invite uh, recruiters and community groups from the regions to our caravan trips uh, in the Laurentians and anywhere else we develop such things, uh, and to college career days in order to foster and increase the links between those groups and our students. Uh, we need to publicize job opportunities in the regions to help the not sure groups move to yes when they are thinking about their future and making plans about where to live and work. Um, uh, where possible, we can make connections back to communities, encourage current students from the regions to maintain their links to their home regions, and on-campus events uh, could be held uh, for students from the regions. Uh, by the way, um, another thing we need to do is look at employment rates in things like uh, federal institutions and agencies in the province. I will just give you one example. This is information that came to me from uh, Stephen Thompson of QCGN about uh, the employment of English-speaking Quebecers in uh, Corrections Canada, uh, where apparently, and one, one of the reasons why youth and adult correctional students might be interested uh, in going off island to work is because there, is, there are a lot of correctional institutions off the island. And corrections, by the way, refers to everything from YMCA programs to federal pen penitentiaries. But if only 2% of the um, workers in federal uh, Corrections Canada institutions in Quebec are Anglophone, that's a big gap in terms of uh, uh, the difference between the their proportion of the population and their proportion of employees. So we need to look into sorts, uh, affirmative action type uh, practices in various uh, governmental, provincial, and uh, federal uh, uh, institutions in Quebec. Um, and we need to work with community groups to maintain links with their students who are at John Abbott College and assist them in targeting the 75% of who are interested in uh, going home to work and the over half, that is 54.5% of the students from the island of Montreal who are also interested possibly in going to the regions to work. Those are very encouraging results. Up to 75% of this dialogue students being interested in working in the regions and 54.5% of the overall, uh, or, sorry, the Montreal Island dialogue students who would consider going to uh, work in the regions. So um, I think that's, uh, where I'm going to end, unless you want me to do the quiz. Well, we do have a quiz and a prize to see how attentive you've been to all of this information. So uh, I will ask uh, the question and we'll uh, get, well, I'll, I'll, if somebody doesn't have the precise answer, we'll take the closest one of the first three people. So here's the question and you can put up your hand if you know the answer. In total, how many John Abbott students are in the five dialogue programs? Well, somebody jumped at it without putting her hands up. That happens. Uh, so you win the prize. <laughs> uh, you, and Joanne will deliver it to you. It was rigged. So somebody takes good notes, right? <laughs> so I will turn it over to Jean to uh, conclude. Thank you. I, I have to thank uh, Doug and Joanne. Uh, when I introduced the... Um, uh, the idea of presenting today, I just said, well, maybe we could present to a, couple, a few people. And then I, then I got a little more specific. I said, well, come downtown for a cup of coffee. Yeah, so. yeah come have coffee. And, and then I said, well, there may be 30. Then I said, well, there may be 70 or 80. And oh, by the way, the minister is going to be coming. And so I, I made it a tough on them. But I think what, what probably is the most important message is trying to create links, links with the community groups, with the CIUS, because you know, a lot of the work we do, if, a, if I have a student, Maria or Francine will say to me, I'd love to send a student to a certain region of Quebec, an Anglophone. However, there are rules, there are territories that protect internships, so we have to work with the CIUS to make sure that, that we can send our students in territories where there may be Francophone sages, that's what we're sending our, our uh, students to, to serve the Anglophone population. So there's the, the connections that have to be made there. Certainly the community groups, the connection they will make with the sages. Now we have John Abbott as, as one of the, one example. There are 48 sages in Quebec obviously not Anglophone, but there are 48 SAGEPs where we have Anglophone students that may want to come back in our regions. And the last thing, uh, I'm hoping, that the SAGEPs, and I think we've gotten that from John Abbott, the SAGEPs are starting to think, will start thinking, well, how many students do I have from the regions? And I think the indirect um, uh, effect of this 
uh, research was that the people at John Abbott started thinking, saying, oh, I didn't realize we had two students from La, La Tabatière, and we had some from Chevry, we had some from Gaspé, we had some from Quebec City. Um, so it, it's good that the CEGEPs start thinking of the regions and start thinking of, of, of maybe encouraging those students to go back. We can work with the community groups when it comes, up, when it comes time to give the scholarships. Uh, the, the region, if I look at Capital National, uh, the Capital National may not know that there are students at John Abbott in, in nursing, for example. Well, there's an opportunity for, for the people at John Abbott to advertise on their campus that there are scholarships for students and go back to your community groups to inform yourself around the, the possibility of the uh, McGill Leadership Program. So today it's the links, and uh, these are certainly good people uh, that I've been able to work with, but I'm sure you'll be able to connect with other SAGEPs, and of course my, my role at, at Dialogue is to help you do that. So thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, you've been very uh, patient and attentive, and uh, you are just a few minutes from your reward, which is a coffee break. But uh, there, is, there are a few minutes uh, for uh, questions or comments to any of the three, uh, to any of the three speakers. Please, if you could go to the mic, please, Jim. Jim Carter, CHSSN, of course. Um, um, I'm interested, well, first of all, the presentation was excellent uh, and very exciting uh, because you're kind of like a prowl into the CGEP network. Uh, so your engagement with the project actually opens up possible uh, interest of, other, of the other English-speaking CGEPs. So my question is that. Um, do you have a strategy or an approach of connecting with the other English-speaking CGEPs? Um, have you had conversations? Um, do you see a potential uh, in expanding uh, what I call a very important pilot involvement of John Abbott uh, to involve other CGEPs? Thank you, Jim. Um, yes, in fact, well, we have, uh, for example, we have a small project with Dawson College. We have a, a Dawson College as a program in assistant physiotherapists. And again, in many of the institutions, they're not able to afford possibly a, a physiotherapist, but um, they could afford an assistant physiotherapist. So we, there's an example, Dawson, and they have other prob uh, programs in social work, et cetera. We, uh, we're working with Champlain and St. Lambert. We're working with uh, Cégep Limolou in Quebec City, where their nursing students are taking additional courses in English. Their lab work, when they're working with the, the mannequins, I was going to say the dummies, but the mannequins, uh, they put it on the English, uh, uh, I guess, mode. And they, also the, the patient, uh, the, uh, the uh, mannequin responds in English. That's the example. So we're working with, with, uh, with a number of SAGEPs, uh, but and at Heritage in, in, um, in Gatineau. Heritage is giving additional French courses to their students in nursing and special care counseling. So no, we, we uh, certainly are, are looking at more and more SAGEPs, working with uh, the high schools. See, the, the professional programs in high schools become, are becoming more and more important. When we talk about a préposé, we talk about nursing assistants, we need those people. So that uh, is, again, something that we've, we've tapped into, and I think that, uh, that uh, there are many things we can do. Thank you. So I'm going to take the executive decision of uh, extending the question period a little bit, because though um, we have a coffee break scheduled, there doesn't seem to be any coffee. <laughs> and as a philosopher, I can tell you that that's a conceptual uh, difficulty. Uh, so hopefully that is in the... That's going to be remediated very soon, and um, we'll keep on going. Yeah, yes. please. I don't know if I'm, okay, good. Susie Faggy, I'm from the Central Quebec School Board in the Quebec City region. We are an English school board, one of the nine English school boards in the province. We are the only English adult and vocational training center in Quebec City. Uh, we are the best kept secret in town, is what I tell everybody. Uh, we recently, through this project, uh, managed to get a pharmacy technical assistant program going. We started January 22nd. 
And the way we promote our program, first of all, there's only one other center in uh, Quebec City allowed to offer that because at our level, the Ministry of Education decides who offers what programs. So uh, we're, uh, we're thrilled to have uh, managed to get the authorization to offer this. We managed to get a group going, a full group going, uh, 15 students. And while promoting uh, for recruiting of the students in, for this program, you know, we had radio blitzes and we, you know, we had to get this going. And one of the unexpected links, I would say, that we have is employers phoning us because of our advertisements, telling us that, you know, oh, you're going to have, you're, you're offering the program now, fantastic, and you're going to have, actually have bilingual people coming out of your programs, because that's the way we're promoting it. We don't promote it as an English program, we promote it as a bilingual program, because once they go off in internships in Quebec City, they have to speak French. So I just wanted to say the one unexpected link is actual, the employers. And, the, uh, you know, we, we had employers from the hospital system and employers from community pharmacies calling us and saying, okay, so can we start posting jobs at your place already? And we hadn't even started the program yet, yeah. So I just want an, un an unanticipated uh, link with, with the employers. I, I just also want to point out that uh, Maria and Francine are also available to answer questions. And one thing we were discussing before was that all dental students who want to practice in Quebec, along with all nurses, do have to pass a French language test to get their license. <coughs> Please, yeah, we're still waiting for the coffee, so. Um. My name is Maria Lewis. I'm a nursing teacher at John Abbott College. Um, I just wanted to tell you also, I don't know if we mentioned it, but we do have a Facebook page, and it's called Jack, J-A-C, I have to write it down because I also don't always remember these things, J-A-C Community Health and Social Service Project. So you can join it just to see. The students created it with me because they're more, much more techy than I am. And when we created it, it was just a private group, but now it's an open group. So anyone can jump on board, no pun intended, but on the bus, and they can see what, uh, what it looks like. But one of the things I just wanted to share also was you know, being on the road with the students, it's, it's actually really a privilege. I mean, as educators, we really feel like proud, proud parents, in a sense, seeing our students out there, really reaching out to the people in the communities, whether it's the high school students or the, the elderly population. Providing them with English health care also is so important because if I think of our elderly population out in the communities, so many times, uh, They've said to me in conversations that they were just, and some were even in tears to talk about getting English healthcare services. They no longer had access to that, many of them. Many of them don't even have family doctors. So this was really something, and it made a huge impression on our students as well. So this, you know, a lot of students afterwards were saying, you know, we really need to get out and provide more services, um, you know, to our English communities out there. So. That was really uh, touching for all of us. I think it made a long-lasting impression on our students. I mean, some of them were already planning to go back. Some of them are from those regions, so they were planning to go back home and work. But others really saw the need, so it really uh, made an impression on them. So, so yeah, so we're really, we're really proud of our, of our initiative and um, really proud of our students. So that's all I want to say. I'll just pick up on the uh, comment about bilingualism. Uh, we are inc increasingly being approached by francophone CEGEPs who want joint programs with us precisely because they are interested in their students becoming bilingual, and of course we are as well. Uh, one thing we try to, we need to try to do with our students is uh, develop the sense in them of working and living in French as part of their career and life project, as a meaningful part of it. So it's, a, it's an interesting thing that with the English-speaking community, if we want the regions to uh, thrive, uh, we need to, the students from the island of Montreal and from our dialogue programs to buy into the idea that they will be working and living in French significantly. Uh, it seems that the coffee has arrived. Um, so I would like to thank uh, our three speakers uh, for this very interesting presentation. We'll take a 15-minute break now uh, before the next session. So thank you, all three, very much. Thank you.